My name is Boyd Varty. I think of myself as an artist of experience. My passion is to create transformational experiences for myself and others as a way to explore what it means to truly live. My central exploration is to live on what I would call the track of your life. To me, this is to live courageously towards the discovery of what you are called to and to what life asks of you. So much of how I live has been informed by my passion as an animal tracker. I'm following the trail of my own life and reporting back. This show is a daily broadcast from a treehouse on the Londolozi Game Reserve in the wild eastern part of South Africa. Londolozi is a 14,000 hectare wilderness reserve adjacent to the Kruger National Park. The land is home to lion, leopard, rhino, elephant and buffalo, as well as a variety of other animals. I'm your host, Boyd Varty. My goal is to spend 40 days and 40 nights alone in the wilderness to explore the archetype of the mystic in nature and hone my skills as a tracker. These are my daily stories. Day 20. Centered. Journal entry. This morning at dawn, a spur fowl flew over me in sheer terror. You've never seen a creature emit such pure life-or-death effort. It was, alarm it was alarming as it strained its stubby wings. Drr, drr, drr. A second after it went over, a goshawk came past, silent, with its wings folded like a missile. It was a moment of extreme clarity. Life or death pulled tight in fractions of time. They were over my head and gone in seconds, so I'm left to wonder. Last night we had a small mishap when a scorpion appeared on a log in the fire. I rescued him with barbecue tongs, and it was last seen heading up the tong towards my hand when the headlamp failed. I dropped the tongs and scampered away in flip-flops to get a lantern. I was paranoid around the fire for the rest of the evening, still wearing flip-flops. I'm thinking a lot about how information is transferred. It started yesterday when I went looking for elephants. I've had this idea about spending a whole day watching an elephant move. I found tracks in the late afternoon of a huge bull who had walked a few hours before. Elephant bulls either move huge distances or they mill about. I hoped for the latter. The tracks took me into a beautiful grove of old leadwoods and ebony trees. There was long green grass that had been pushed flat where the bull had walked. I noticed tracks of a second and then a third bull. Found where they had pulled down high branches of a marula for its leaves. In a sandy section, one of the bulls had dug in the sand and no doubt thrown it onto his back. I followed signs of crushed foliage, chewed branches and trodden grass. The afternoon was so quiet and the calls of birds sounded sonic through the woodlands. I have been alone for 20 days and my relationship with silence has deepened proportionate to my own inner stillness. It's like the stillness itself is alive. I heard a sound like wet canvas slapping somewhere up ahead, and I st stood still and listened. Nothing. Then there it was again, the sound of an elephant slinging mud. I, ma I made my way to the fringe of the woodland. There, in a mud wallow in the clearing ahead, was not one, but three elephant bulls in a muddy wallow. I tested the wind and set course with good cover for a huge termite mound with a beautiful scotia tree growing out the top of it. This mound was so tall it meant I could look down on the elephants from about 50 meters away without disturbing them. The setup was perfect. The elephants shone with black mud, ears flapped, trunks gurgled. The elephants move with such deliberate slowness. I could feel them pulling me into their frequency, moving as if in treacle. There was one huge bull and two smaller. What fascinated me was as they moved, there was clearly a silent code passing between them, and they seemed to establish some kind of order of what we would call hierarchy, 
but what I would consider harmony as they moved. Occasionally, one bull would walk up to another. Two huge dome-shaped heads would move towards each other and stop a few feet apart, and silently, without touching, a kind of sensing would occur. Then one bull would give way. It was as if their bodies would feel each other and that would shape their interaction through that felt sense. It was beautiful to watch. My mind flashed to a time in Zimbabwe when I stood next to a huge baobab tree. The stem of the tree was hollow and high up in its strange branches a swarm of bees had made their hive. As the bees buzzed, the acoustic hum of the hive would travel down the stem of the tree and out of a small opening in front of which I stood. And I tell you, as I stood next to that thousand-year-old didgeridoo, I felt that hum into my body. It was as if an understanding beyond words vibrated into my nervous system. It was like I glimpsed a harmonic code that holds all of life together. I thought of that watching those elephants, totally in tune with the language between them, of felt presence. After a time, the bulls moved off into terrain that wouldn't really be appropriate to follow in, so I let them go. An African harrier hawk flew by, mobbed by twenty shining blue starlings. I just stayed there on that termite mound. Somewhere deep down under where I sat, termites were farming fungi firing neurochemical algorithms to maintain the temperature, distribute information through a million individual termites acting as one. What do we know of experiencing life when we reduce what we understand to what we can explain? Felt experience is a frontier. Every night as I sleep in my bed, looking up at the stars through my net, I'm aware that I am sleeping at the frequency of the wilderness. How does that change me? What information is occurring down at cellular levels as my biochemical self interacts with the infinite intelligence of its surroundings? How much code can pass between you and another in the quality and nature of a single touch? What worlds of information are there in a glance? I guess all I'm saying is I'm learning to experience life through more than my rational mind. I'm in the somatic, sensational, olfactory, neurochemical, electromagnetic, hormonal, pheromonal realms. Last night, I smelt a buffalo on the breeze. Fifteen minutes later, I heard him crossing the river. I was so pleased with myself, I got up and shone my torch to make sure I was right, which I was. If I had a conclusion for 20 days in, I would say this. A team of very smart people out there are working on how to earn your attention. When your attention is attuned to content, the mind stops imagining, the body stops sensing, the heart stops feeling, the neurochemistry becomes dependent, and the tactile nature of experience is lost felt experience and our relationship with its creation is where the foundations of meaning constellate. Nature is a network of infinite interlocking intelligences emitting frequency that you can tune into at levels way beyond knowing the names of birds and trees. And if you do, your capacity for imagination, innovation and feeling return naturally. Life comes back to life. Simplicity is a lost art form and it's radically different to making things easier to do. Firelight is essential to the well-being of spirit. And finally, the most sought art art form of the future will be the creation of gatherings where people are guided out of pretense and perspex enclosed lives into deeper encounters with others and all life. Wow, can you imagine me at 40 days? What I am experiencing now, inside of this ever-deepening stillness, 
is a strange phenomenon of memories returning to me and playing out in slow motion. It's as if my mind is giving up things it has stored for years. Essentially, I am witnessing my past life in slow motion again. With the frame speed slowed right down, I can see the difference between what was happening and what I believed was happening. I don't know what to make of it yet, except that it feels like I'm editing in time. I don't know. Thank God. I surrender. Four zero. Out. This has been another episode of the Track Your Life podcast with Boyd Varty. Follow us on Instagram at Boyd underscore Varty, Twitter at Boyd Varty, visit Boyd's website at boydvarty.com or subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. Please rate and review this podcast so that more people can find and enjoy it.